All right, welcome to the chaos. This is what packing for uh, two Himalayan expeditions looks like. So the first expedition is pretty complex. It's a peak uh, between Nepal and Tibet, right up on the Tibetan border. And it involves some technical climbing, uh, very few ascents, uh, unlikely to be existing fixed ropes. We are going to put in fixed ropes. We're a larger team and uh, we're probably not climbing it alpine style, but it's not that tall of a peak. So certainly could easily be done alpine style. I'm gonna start over here on the right hand side. This is kind of the personal kit that I, I'm planning to have on me when I'm climbing. And this is mostly for the first expedition on that uh, more complex summit. Um, the next expedition is simply on Mera Peak and is uh, training uh, mostly Sherpas and as well as other ethnic groups that work in Nepal as guides. And so that's a much easier trip overall. But this trip, um, I've got a small summit pack here. This is uh, the Arcteryx FL, Alpha FL 30 liter pack. It's waterproof, not essential in the cold temps that we have where we're going, but it's nice to keep some of the spin drift out and things. Mostly I, I like that pack because it's super lightweight. You'll see I've gotten rid of a lot of the uh, bungee on the outside and I've you know, modified the attachment system for ice axes. Um, I like that if you're climbing rock or anything like that that has chimneys or featured ice, then that bungee system can really get hung up on things if you sort of lean back. So that's what I've got for my pack. It's very lightweight and simple. And then uh, crampons, this is an interesting one here. You'll see I've got a, a couple different front plates here. Um, this is just to point out that uh, you'll notice that the front plate from the old Lynx crampon here, which I've climbed in quite a bit, is significantly longer, you know, by about an inch or so than the front plate for the new dart. And what that means is if you're close to uh, maxed out for the length of the sizing bar on the crampon, like I am, it means that uh, the old Lynx crampons will fit your expedition boots just fine, but the new dart crampons you may have to size up on the sizing bar. So um, that's the case for me. So it's always super important before you go out on any trip that you check your crampons, especially if you've got new crampons, even if you think they fit your boot, you need to check uh, every time. New crampon, new boot. <laughs> maybe more swollen foot, new age, doesn't matter. Make sure, check before you leave home that your crampons are fitting your boots, super critical. And the case that it's that I'm using here, um, I actually really love these cases. It's by Fernline Designs. Fernline Designs is just a tiny little company that makes these um, Tyvek cases. Uh, they're really, really lightweight and packed down to nothing. So I use these things for a lot. And uh, Expedition Boots, good hot topic. Here I have the G2SMs. They are a remarkably lightweight boot. Um, I've climbed a little, a little bit of mixed and a lot of dry. Um, so dry tooling and crampons with these things. And uh, they're, they're pretty good at climbing. What I'm not super psyched about is the Velcro. Um, and getting the boot on is not that easy compared to um, the Scarpas that I've had in the past. But uh, these are super lightweight. Um, so uh, I think that makes up for it. BOA system is also really nice, uh, but it could also be critical if that failed in the field and you weren't able to field repair it. So we've got, um, for our team, we have two field repair kits coming out for the BOA system, just in case. These funky things, these are like ultra lightweight, little minimalistic um, shin guards. They're made for you know playing um, like field sports, like soccer. But uh, I find these work fantastic for preventing shin baying, which is when your, your shin is getting rubbed raw by the cuff of your boot. And compared to some of the other La Sportiva boots I've used, I find for whatever reason, the G2SM kind of does a, a number on my shin. So, um, you know, these come with a little sleeve. Um, you can also get uh, some shin protectors that are specifically made for skiing. And they accomplish the same thing. Up here is my harness. Looks like a little bit of a alpine lingerie, huh? This is by Blue Ice. This is the Chukas Pro harness. And I've affixed two Gravel um, ice clippers on there. They're pretty nice. You don't have to have a harness that's that lightweight, but um, I find it pretty comfortable for what it is. So there you go. 
and this is other these are other items that I'm gonna have on my harness this is kind of my little mini bale kit tiny knife a little a little um, ring there repel repel ring or repeat uh, you know that's a little bit overkill if you're really trying to cut weight you've got plenty of carabiners around you could bail off a carabiner um, you could get one of the sort of hollow rings and you could thread that with uh, a piece of cord something like that but that's what I've got on there right now I've got three locking carabiners those are petzl attaches which I find are pretty easy to work with with gloves because they've got a pretty big basket which is the wide end of the carabiner there I've got my third hand and uh, this is five millimeter sterling brand cord that works on uh, diameters of rope down to around six millimeters as long as they're not icy you get icy six millimeter fixed rope uh, which is not uncommon you know you might be using petzl pure lines to try to keep your weight down as part of your fixed rope system and um, that doesn't work so well so uh, i also have a four millimeter uh, piece of cord there and again you're not really relying on this for your life you know it's mostly to back up a rappel or to assist by giving a little bit more friction as you're doing a kind of traversing down climb or traversing rappel um, just to prevent a slip from coming becoming a fall so it doesn't have to be outrageously strong but those are still pretty darn strong I've got this uh, petzl 120 centimeter dyneema runner with uh, an auto locking carabiner on there i will use that as kind of a personal anchor system um, and an extension for rappels and things like that on occasion. And then I have a ATC, um, and so that I, you know, we're, we're not fixing the whole route. We're, we're planning on going up and down a little bit and, and, um, you know, climbing and belaying through as much as we can, fixing the lower part of the route and then shooting through the summit, um, by, by free climbing, um, everything to the top and then, um, rappelling off anchors till we get to the lower section and then rappelling our fixed ropes back to camp. So it's good to have that. Um, up here, I have an actual personal anchor. I like to use my personal anchor in accompaniment with uh, an ascender, sometimes called a jumar. Um, that allows me to position the ascender, the ascender far away from me uh, if I'm on low angle terrain or closer to me if I'm on steep terrain. Uh, and I find that's pretty nice for being comfortable. You always want your elbow at a slight bend if you're in steep terrain and you've got the ascender positioned a long ways away from you and you fall, then it can be kind of hard to unweight it. And then we've got this guy right here. This guy is um, a Mago 8 by Edelrid, and that is for repelling really skinny ropes. So a lot of the fixed rope that we use in Nepal is, you know, 8 millimeter or smaller in diameter. 8 millimeter would be pretty big. And uh, it's nice to have something that can get good friction if you need it. A lot of times you're in relatively low angle terrain, you know, you're repelling snow slopes or low angle ice, and you really don't need that much friction. So um, the nice thing about the Mago 8 is you can increase friction or decrease friction without too much difficulty. Then I have a micro traction. I don't have the nano traction. I like that the micro traction is a little larger, so it's easier to work with with gloves and um, you can disengage the cam on it. Um, whereas the nano traction, the new nano traction is certainly lighter and more compact, but you can't permanently disengage the cam. I also have, this is my uh, Beal Escaper. Uh, unlikely that we'll end up using that, but it's you know a good backup to have in case you need to get off the mountain quick and uh, you don't have two ropes to get down, but you wanna be able to get down full 60 meters if you're you know, using a 60 meter rope, you can do a full 60 meter rappel by using that Beal Escaper. And then I've got a helmet. I may take that one, uh, or I may take a lighter weight helmet. Um, not quite decided yet on that, but trouble with a lighter weight helmet is if you are, uh, you know, having things portered up to a base camp and that helmet is inside a duffel bag and being carried around, it can be broken pretty easily. So having a more robust helmet is not a bad idea on an expedition like this. Okay, here are some of the ropes. Uh, the rest of the ropes are in Nepal. A lot of the rope that we use in Nepal is Korean fixed rope, pretty small diameter. It's whitish in color, it's a type of braided nylon, I believe. It has a terrible handle. And uh, 
yeah, it's, it's not great, but it's affordable and you can get it in Nepal. And if you need a lot of fixed rope, it's a little bit, it's expensive to bring it from the States. Um, and you know, the Korean fixed rope does the job, but the rope that I am bringing here, I've got two lead lines. So these are both eight, seven, um, Mammut Alpine senders. I find they have pretty good handle, really good dry treatment, uh, which I like. And, um, for steeper terrain, uh, we're planning on belaying it or if uh, we do fix you know the rope um, and people are using ascenders it's really nice to have you know not a half rope or a twin rope that people are using an ascender on it's not only they're going to get a lot of rope stretch but going to do more damage to the rope this is still pretty darn thin for um, using an ascender on and then this is the pure line, the Petzl Pure line, which is a Dyneema, woven Dyneema rope or a UHMPE fiber. Super strong, remarkably abrasion resistant. It's a little bit hard to pull. So one of the other purposes of the um, micro traction there is if you are using that pure line as a pull cord, then you can attach a micro traction to it and pull it using the micro traction um, as basically a grab, a rope grab. And that works really, really well for pulling heavy ropes down um, using the pure line. Have my ice tools here, or in this case, a Petzl Sumtech and uh, um, the, uh, oh, wow, why am I forgetting my favorite ice tool here? Ah, that's all right. It'll come to me soon, I'm sure. Um, but uh, this combination, uh, it's, it's hard to say if this is gonna be the best combination, but the route starts with 40 to 50 degree angle snow and then gets steeper up above with some uh, mixed rock climbing and then going up through a, a mixed chimney um, and then to some lower angle mixed rock and, rock and snow and ice slabs up at the top. And so um, this seemed like a good uh, compromise to be able to get good purchase in the snow um, with this longer shaft of the Sumtech and then be able to do some, you know, easy mixed climbing with the more technical ice tool there. Um, you'll notice, uh, the, that I, there's a pretty good ads and there's a hammer. Um, you know, we'll be looking at pitons in a minute. So it's good to have a hammer, uh, especially if you know, you're fixing a your route and you're going to need to put some pins in. A lot of the pins we're going to use are titanium Russian pins, and those are in, in Nepal pretty easy to find those at climbing shops in Nepal, not so much in the States. An interesting thing here is um, this is uh, the ads hammer. This has just come out. You should check them out if you're interested. I'm going to try this out. Uh, it's a piece of metal. It's pretty robust and it fits on the ads tool of, you know, an ice axe or in this case, a uh, um, modular ice axe and it turns the ads tool into a hammer um, so that can be nice because uh, you know a lot of times when you're in snow you have a more of a straight shafted tool and you have an ads on it because if you want to put in snow anchors it's good to have an ads for digging those snow anchors out but then if you start up a couloir and there's rock on either side then you might want to hammer and the trouble with um, ice tool hammers is this bend in the shaft can make it really awkward to get a good solid stroke especially if you're balancing on the points of your crampon you're mixed climbing and trying to place a piton at the same time with a bent shafted tool it's it's not that fun so um not that it would be fun to try with the with this guy either but uh, it would be interesting to to give that a go see how that works out with with uh converting the ads into a hammer. And then uh, this here is um, my tether to tether my tools. Uh, since I'll be in sustained steep terrain, uh, I'll probably use that tether um, because it would be pretty consequential to drop a tool in some of the terrain we're in, especially the upper mountain where we're just going for the summit and there's no ropes in place. Um, and then I have a small tool right here and uh, that is simply for adjusting ice axe heads and things like that. It has a couple Allen keys on it. A file. Um, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily always bring a file. I'm, I've just replaced, you could probably see, I've just replaced the pick on that ice tool. Um, Nomix. There you go. That's what it's called, the Petzl Nomic. 
I kept thinking of the ergonomic, but yeah, so my Nomec, I just replaced the pick on there. It was getting pretty worn out from dry tooling a bunch. Um, so, you know, you may or may not bring the file, but I can bring it and I can leave it in base camp. And a lot of times the folks I'm climbing with, especially the Sherpa teams that I climb with, um, the, the tools they have over there are oftentimes pretty beat up and in need of some tender care. So um, I can file those up and sharpen them down. And I'm bringing a couple um, tools over for Mingma and Karma as well. And then uh, that other long piece of material right behind the file here is, uh, is a V-thread tool. And you'll also see the back of the V-thread, there is a, you know, a bolt tightener um, if you happen to be doing uh, bolted uh, dry roots, which, yeah, not so much in alpine environment where we're going. Have a rack of ice screws. Also really kind of difficult for me to know uh, what to bring in terms of ice protection. Um, not many climbs of the mountain, therefore not much information and not many photos, but it looks like it can be very, very different conditions for the same time of year. And um, sometimes there's a lot of rock that's getting heated up by the sun, melting the snow and creating ice runnels. And uh, those ice runnels in dihedrals and things like that can offer pretty good opportunities for ice protection. Um, that's on the upper mountain. And on the lower mountain, there's um, it's fairly glaciated. There's some seracs and things like that. And so there may be opportunities for longer screw placements or V-thread repels. Um, so that's the ice rack that I've got right there. Those are all petzl screws. And then again, I have another um, one of these ultra lightweight um, Firmline Designs bags. That's how I carry my ice screws. I don't carry them with caps in them. I don't carry them with guards. I find I just put them all in that bag and then I wrap the compression strap from that bag around and then clip it and that protects the threads and protects the, the, um, the teeth of the ice screw. And I find that works really well. It's just so much more efficient way of carrying my gear and packs down far smaller. And then this, um, I can't talk too much about this inside this little old Kular, uh, black diamond Kular harness bag is, is a secret weapon. It's a, um, a special type of V-thread tool that I've created, but it's not patented yet. So maybe if we're lucky, we'll see those on the market in the next few years, but um, I don't want to show it in the video right now. Um, and then I've just got a rescue knife on there for cutting cord. In that sack is also a little bit of cord for V-threads. Although when possible, it's nice to do a, a zero thread um, if that's the way you're getting down the mountain, which is where you thread your rope instead of threading an extra piece of cord in order to bail. Now this stuff here is probably a bit of a surprise to folks looking at Nepal Expedition. This has nothing to do with climbing the first peak that we're doing. Um, this has everything to do with creating a training site for Sherpas, a lower altitude in a village. We uh, hammered out um, a sort of a, a top rope climbing site a few years ago using hand drills. And um, that was pretty tiring. Um, the, a lot of the stuff we were, we were drilling into was harder than granite. And uh, some of the holes were a little ovate. So we're gonna go back and improve that site. But for those who are interested, you know, this is kind of the, the bolting kit that I have. I just got this newer drill, which I'm pretty excited about. It's a lot um, easier to use than the old drill. I'd, I've mucked about with and a heck of a lot easier than a hand drill. So some notes here, you'll see it's got three batteries. I've got um, two of the standard capacity batteries and then uh, one higher capacity battery. We're going to be pretty remote. It's not going to be that easy to charge. And so I'm, uh, I'm hoping I can drill, you know, right around 16 holes with what I've got here. And then of course I've got the charger as well. Um, and there is a micro hydro project not too far from the village where we'll be staying. So uh, should be able to recharge to some degree in the evenings, but it might be a slow process. Got a pair of gloves, I've got safety glasses, and then um, a wrench. This is, uh, it's always good to have multiple drill bits in case you break some in the field. Um, so, you know, one of these has been used a bit and then uh, the others are backups here. A brush to brush out the inside of the hole. And um, this right here, plastic tube, is a blow tube. It's a bag with chalk in it to mark exactly where you want the bolts to go. And then um, the bolts themselves and then a few hangers. I've, I've got more than that, I just didn't put them all in this video right here. Okay, protection. This is what people are always interested in, rock gear. Um, 
So uh, this uh, is, is going to be mostly for, um, for training purposes. This is a wall hammer here, an Alpine wall hammer. Um, I really like this hammer actually. It's got a little beak on it that's great for cleaning out cracks. And then uh, the hammer is it's pretty lightweight uh, for what it is, but it still seems to do a reasonable job of driving. But certainly a heavier weight hammer would put the pins in a lot faster. But at altitude, you know, do what you can with, with weight. So um, obviously if you have a, an ice tool that has a hammer, you might not be bringing something like this. But we'll be doing a bolting job in, uh, as well. We're out there and you need a hammer for that anyway. And then I have these quick links uh, just for size comparison here. These are tiny. Um, you know, these are rated to 25 KN. They're made by Camp. Let's see, where is, I'm gonna see if I can get it to show here. Mm, it's a little hard. Oh, oh. Yeah, you can just barely see there. Those are, those have been rated 25 KN. Um, we're gonna use those as part of anchor construction systems. <clears throat> a lot of times um, in the Himalayas, you're, instead of, you know, equalizing anchors by clipping a carabiner to a bolt, clipping another carabiner to a bolt, or clipping a, a carabiner into a piton, another carabiner into a piton, and equalizing. A lot of times you'll tie fixed rope through the eye of pitons, and that means you need to carry less carabiners because you never really know how many anchors you're going to need to get up and down a mountain, especially if you're using fixed rope. So that's common practice, but having a few quick links like this allows you to have single rappel points and also if you're worried about the sharp edges of a piton with rope tied through it, um, you know, on these, these style of pitons are, are pretty round on the inside, but um, some of these other styles of pitons, especially after they've been worked a little bit, some of these black diamonds, they can get a little bit sharp. And so um, you may want to use, use some of these instead. Um, we've got a selection of pitons, mostly in the kind of medium size. Some are a, a malleable sort of metal and then some are higher carbon steel that are made to be pounded and removed multiple times. You can see a couple of these I've used multiple times already. This knife blades I find tend to be the most useful piton for alpine roots in Nepal, um, as well as most places, honestly. But um, some of these, you know, all-purpose pitons made by with more malleable materials can be really great. Um, keep in mind this material that I'm providing is really particular to uh, a big alpine root in a country where, you know, fixing roots is common practice. Um, and they, just, just know this may not be okay in a lot of locations. Um, yeah, you, you might not want to be leaving fixed gear, especially roots that have been climbed many, many, many times and are kind of classics. Uh, I've got a couple oval carabiners to rack uh, pitons on. And then this is, you know, kind of just a small detail here. This is flagging tape. And um, I like to use flagging tape to mark anchors for repels. So if you've got a, a big, big day in the Alpine or if someone is sick or uh, becomes injured and you're repelling down at night, it's not terribly difficult to find the anchors that you built on the way up uh, because you flagged them. This, this is um, reflective flagging tape on there. And then uh, this is um, just red, red tape. Um, if we, you know, if we anticipate that we are having some difficult weather um, for the second trip, which involves some low angle glacial link, low angle glacier crossing for a ways and in inclement weather, it can be hard to see and white out, then uh, we can collect willow wands at lower altitude um, in these free ranging cattle pastures and then just use some tape. In the past, we have even just used um, candy bar wrappers and the inside of candy bar wrappers oftentimes is foil. And uh, we just taped the foil candy bar wrappers to literally pieces of, I would say willow, but it's actually bamboo, thin pieces of bamboo that are collected along the trail on the approach and that services our wands. And then we have our Rock Pro here. Again, it's really hard to know what you're gonna need. And uh, this is certainly more than I would bring if we were not fixing ropes or leaving anchors in place for rappelling to get back down. Again, there's no way to get off this mountain um, with a, an easy, easy down climb. So we're gonna have to rappel, which means we're gonna have to leave some sort of gear. So 
we've got um, a selection of, of medium nuts and then you know hexes I'll probably add a few larger hexes um, a lot of times you, you can fix these pretty good by hammering on them with your um, ice tool uh, hammer or sometimes even with the pick of your ice tool just to really weld the nuts in place I've got a couple tri cams um, can be really handy in certain situations um, but you have to be a little careful with ice filled cracks in any type of camming device and then a selection of cams so same thing applies camming device be careful with ice in those cracks it may appear solid but you don't always know um, but uh, if it's really dry and sublimated out then uh, you know a lot of times you can chip the ice out of the cracks and things like that or, or there may not be any ice in cracks in the rock and then you can use cams so this is just a single set up to number three and then uh, some extension there's five pieces of single length 60 centimeter draws there and then three long quick draw types and uh, yeah that about covers it this is the kind of the personal and technical gear for the mountain and hopefully if I have time I will get into some of the clothing and camping gear for um, this style of Himalayan climbing uh, incidentally you do not need these things for 99.999 percent of peaks climbing in Nepal um, you know a lot of these peaks have been guiding guided literally thousands of times there's fixed ropes everywhere um, there's villages close by and uh, you know there's there's no need to bring all this kit with you all right hopefully this has been interesting take care guys